Hi guys, Kaiser here, and welcome back to Iron Kaiser Gaming. Got some pretty exciting news in the Age of Empires 3 world, as the latest public update preview for the July patch has finally released. So we get our first look at what they're planning on adding to the game with the next patch. They've added some pretty unique cool things, so let's go ahead and open this up and see what they've got in here. Now, as we take a look at the article, uh, the first thing they note is that they're going to be updating this public update preview throughout the month leading into July, so it's very possible that these numbers are not finalized and they may make some changes between now and the actual July patch. So, good thing to keep in mind as we look at what they have here. Looking first in the general section, some really cool things. One I'm very thankful for. The Native American build menu, they've moved some things around to where now the house is going to be in the same location for the Native American civs as it is for all of the other civilizations. I don't know about you guys, but I would always get bad muscle memory where I'd keep trying to click on the house and I'd actually click on, I guess it was the community plaza. But they're changing it now, so the same hotkey works across all civilizations for the house. Very thankful for that. Ranged infantry also getting a buff. So in the uh, patch or two back, light infantry and counter skirmishers uh, did were, were kind of nerfed to where they do significantly less damage to cavalry units or heavy cap. Uh, it looks like that may be switching back around, if I'm understanding this right. Light infantry and counter skirms that had their damage against cavalry and shock infantry reduced now have their damage multipliers increased again by about 20%. Both multipliers are now equal at ranged attacks. So, if I'm understanding that right, that's basically just a reversion of the previous change, and so um, you still don't want to do light infantry into Ulans or Cossacks or what have you, but... Uh, they won't be quite as ineffective against those units as they were uh, after the last patch. Um, I think we've got some interesting things here. Grenade troopers have been changed a little bit, the modifiers. A couple of stealth units now move a little bit faster, which is nice. This one I think is really big. Warships improve the turn rate of ships with standard broadside attacks to make it easier for them to pursue and hit moving targets. I think we saw this several times in the AOE3 Noob Cup. And I know in some of my own naval games, there's this weird situation where it takes forever for a warship to actually fire because they're chasing some other unit and it takes them too long to turn. This will be very useful in, uh, I think, in, in making these units more effective. So that's a really good thing. Uh, I'm not going to read through every note. Uh, some of these things, I will have a link in the description below to where you can check out this article for yourself. I'm just highlighting what I think is the most interesting. And here in the units and buildings, they've got some cool things. The fields are now built more quickly and when in range of granary. Native scouts can have been trained by the Aztecs, the Haudenosaunee, and the Lakota from the town center and the native embassy. And that's going to be really important because you see right here, they now inflict five plus five times bonus damage versus mercenaries. So you now have the scouts and not just intelligence units, but they are now your go-to for anti-mercenary fighting. And there are some options that make them even stronger at that, as we'll see in a second. So, big bonus, I think, for the Aztec, the Holocaust, the Lakota, with the native scouts. There. And I guess the... I want to say the Chasky for the Inca also have this kind of thing as well, if I'm not mistaken. Spy, been uh, buffed a little bit, cost a little bit less. Updated icon, pretty cool. The Explorer, yes! All explorers are now as unique as they look. Each civilization received a small bonus. So all of the European civs, their explorers are now slightly unique. The British unit explorer gets plus one range and plus two line of sight. The Dutch explorer can train envoys. The French explorer constructs town... Uh, I'm sorry, town... Uh, that's trade posts. Constructs trade posts faster and does plus one range damage. The German explorer... Regenerates HP 15% faster. The Italian Explorer does bonus damage against treasure guardians and pets. 0.25 times at range and 0.5 times in melee. Ottomans. Ottoman Explorer gets 5% more HP. The Portuguese Explorer gets the Spyglass ability. So the Portuguese, they kind of, they've already got that, right? The Russian Explorer does 5 siege damage. The Spanish Explorer can train war dogs, and the Swedish Explorer does. Plus one melee damage. Kind of leaning into that Carolean thing, right? All right, very cool. 
Very, very cool. I wonder if they're going to change the actual Explorer cards at all as a consequence of this. Because some of these things, like, um, I want to say, if I'm not mistaken, the, the French builds trade posts faster. That used to be a part of the advanced French Explorer card. I may be wrong about that, but I thought that was something that was... We'll see. Of course, artillery moves a little bit faster. Transitions faster. That's nice. Uh, this is a big one, I think. Levied Spearman and Bowman can now be trained in batches of five. It takes seven seconds off the train. So it used to be that they'd stream out one at a time. Uh, now you can actually batch them up, and I think that is a nice move for them. Even though it'll take longer to produce, I think it's worth it. The natives and mercenary units. I will skip most of this. Some pretty cool things in here. Uh, little tweaks here and there. I want to say, maybe I'll highlight these. The battleship, its range has been reduced a little bit. So in the last patch, we had a bunch of new battleship cards that were added. They're very cool, uh, but they're, they've been nerfed slightly now. Can't shoot quite as far. And then the Black Rider is getting buffed. Melee damage increased from 18 to 10. Bookmark that if you're a fan of the Portuguese, because we're going to see them come up in a little bit. Technologies. Uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. This one is big for me personally. I, I've played so many games where I, I get the advanced arsenal and I'm trying to pick up all of my techs. And for some reason, it's paper cartridge. It's always just a little bit too expensive. So that... That cost has been reduced now to 300 wood, 300 coin, down from 350 wood and coin. So, uh, I appreciate that. And uh, a bug, Victorian era, House of Hanover. This is a pretty cool tech. At the House of Hanover, you can research the Victorian era technology to immediately go up to the Fifth Age. It costs this wildly exorbitant amount, but that cost is reduced with every unit and building you produce. And it's available in age one. You probably won't go from age one to age five, but uh, you can just jump ages to the fifth age with the Victorian era tech. It had an issue where some of the civs could not upgrade research upgrades in the factory uh, after they picked this up. I guess that's been fixed, which is pretty cool. You can also use this. It, it ships a factory as well. You can use this technology to get a third factory, which is just wild. That's pretty cool. All right. Cards. Uh, this is fantastic. One of my pet peeves in the game is how these advanced cards here, farm, mill, estate, rice paddy, market, um, many of them are considered useless. They're not really worthwhile for your deck um, because, like, giving your, I don't know, giving your farm extra HP and, you know, reduced build time or whatever is really not worth it not worth a card. And if, you're, if your farm is taking damage, you've probably lost the game already. The extra HP really doesn't help you that much. So these have all been, I think, made much more valuable by the farm Trevois. These cards now send an additional wagon or Trevois. So you actually get a free farm or a free mill or an estate or whatever uh, on top of the other bonuses that are provided. That's pretty cool. I think that makes it much more worthwhile. Blood Brothers it increases the build limit and hit points on native embassies. All right, that's nice. Advanced Scouts no longer enables native scouts in the town centers because that's already unlocked by default now. And now increases bonus damage versus mercenaries by three times, down from ten times. But remember, the scouts already do five times more damage against mercs, so this is an additional three times on top of that. So this just... That just makes them even better. Uh, da, 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 da. I think that pretty much covers it for that. And now we get to what I think is everybody's favorite. The, the, the civilization changes. The Aztecs. Uh, tweaks here and there. I don't think anything too big. The Arrow Knight now does less damage against infantry. The Arrow Knight is the Aztec siege unit. So they will not be as effective as an all-around unit. They won't do that well against infantry. Uh, you will still want other units to help out with that. The Jaguar Prowl Knight benefits from combat promotions and moves faster. It's pretty cool. Warrior Priest will take a little bit longer this one. That's pretty much it. Cards. Um, and I'm not super familiar with the Aztec deck. Let's see, I, I, I do like the renaming of cards to things that are more flavorful. Total comparisons is cooler than cheap war huts. No doubt. 
Oh, it's Duma Citadel, a new card. Ships an American Citadel identical to the Maya Castle. Pretty cool. Temple of Chipe Totec. Support. Now improves Coyote Runner armor by 0.15 up to 0.1. Nice. Uh, legendary Coyote Runner. Now increases Coyote Runner hit points and damage by 50%, down from 60 Okay. That's the Aztec. Not a lot there. The British. Oh, this is pretty cool. All right. Three Settlers card is back. Uh, I know a lot of people were really upset with the last patch when this card was removed. I don't think it changed the game that much for the British, but the card is back. So, uh, you know, definitely a buff for British players. The 10 Pikeman card in H3 is no longer infinite, but now it researches Guard Pikeman and allows researching Imperial Pikeman for a reduced cost. The card has been renamed to Gentleman of the Pike. That's just so cool. Again, a much better name. That's that's just... You want to put that in your deck. The Gentleman of the Pike. And uh, immediately researching the Guard tech, enabling the Imperial tech at a much reduced cost. That's worthwhile. That's pretty neat. And I, and I am assuming you're still getting the 10 pikemen out of the card as well. So, I think all that is a good exchange for not being an infinite card anymore. Musketeer Grenadier Cards. They've been renamed to Cold String Guards, Scots Guards, and Team Grenadier Guards. Again, very, very cool. The Black Watch from the Glorious Revolution uh, Unique Church tech now also grants Highlanders hit point regeneration. <laughs> That's neat. They also get plus three line of sight and plus one range. Oh, that's cool. That is cool. The Redcoat H4. Unique Musketeer upgrade has been reduced. It's a little bit easier to get your Redcoats now. And then the King's Lifeguards H4. Unique Hussar upgrade has also been reduced. So much easier to get into those unique units. Very nice buffs for the British. Chinese. Transcendence Temple has Wonder Ability now is cap of healing. 100 HP per unit. Uh, let me see. We, uh, If you happen to watch the AoE 3 Noob Cup that we hosted on the channel, the Chinese was a civilization that showed up in the final battle, one of the most intense battles of the whole tournament. And um, they, did, they did well. The Arquebusier uh, has reduced its damage down by one. The Flamethrower, its pop cost is reduced by one. Uh, little tweaks here and there. I don't think anything that looks wildly exciting. Uh, you get Shivone. Uh, Shivone like infantry out of the Russian consulate. And Dragoons instead of Cossacks and Hussar. Which are, that's pretty cool. The Dutch. The Belgian Revolution now also converts Reuters into revolutionaries. The Nassau Regiment, a brand new card, age 3, 1,000 coin, sends 14 musket-armed blue guards and enables them in forts. Pretty neat. The Dutch, um, if I am not mistaken, and I'm going to embarrass myself here, but if I remember right, they don't get musketeer by default. Uh, the Dutch don't. So this card might be really useful in kind of plugging a, a gap in their roster. And blue guards are pretty great. Ward Gelders. This is, a, again, a unique unit, uh, a unique church tech. Renamed to Red Lancers. The previous name is now used for an age two card, sending four Swiss pikemen and enabling them in taverns and barracks for a smaller price. So the actual Ward Gelders tech really hasn't been changed other than it's been renamed. And now there's a new Ward Gelders card sending Swiss pikemen. And I'm forgetting the unique aspects of Swiss pikemen. Because they're more than just regular pikemen. I think they've got more HP or something. Carabineers. Unique with Reuter upgrade cost reduced. Attack range increased by one. Stadsvachten. No way I pronounced that right. Unique Halberdier upgrade cost reduced. 650 wood and average point. Research time is Sort of. Pretty nice. Overall, nice benefits for the Dutch. The Ethiopians. Uh, ooh, a little bit of a nerf there with the Mountain Monastery. Gathering less coin over time. Let's see. Yeah, it looks like nerfs for them around across the board there. The French. Crossier, they've been the train time reduced. That's a buff. Native scouts can now be retrained from the town center and native embassy by default. Now, you only get one native scout as the French by default. So I, I don't know how useful 
the buffs to native scouts are going to be for the French, but maybe, maybe that unit might be a little more confused. You know, it's kind of a buff for the French there. Maybe. Sans Colute now counters heavy infantry instead of all infantry. Okay, I don't there. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, I don't think I see anything too wild. Uh, the Young Guard tech, Edict of Nantes, now also enables Grenadier trading in the barracks. So Grenadier, of course, normally are produced out of the arsenal. Um, like the siege workshop, right? But now it's produced out of the barracks as well. Pretty cool. The Germans! Advanced buildings. Okay, fix an issue. Cool. Okay, now, so now delivers seven wing Tsar. Nice. Circle army. Costs a little bit. So it seems to say more or less just different. Now cost four and wood four and point in the treaty game mode if the Blood Brothers card has also been set. So I think Blood Brothers reduces the cost of different merc shipments, and now the Circle Army also benefits from that as well. Native mercenary cards. Fixed issues where cards did not apply the Germans. Civ bonus. So uh, you're getting a little bit more out of these different cards. It's pretty neat. Zweihander. Also increases the Doppelsoldner melee range by plus one. This, of course, will allow them to start doing their damage sooner. It's pretty great. Uh, needle Gunners. Unique Skirmisher upgrade cost reduced. The combat strength has gone down a little bit, but the rate of fire has been improved to 2.5 seconds from 3 seconds. So you're firing your gun faster uh, with the Needle Gunners. The Japka Ulans. Uh, they're a unique upgrade for the Ulan. They've been, that cost has been reduced and also improves range resistance by 5%, renamed to Prussian Ulans. I think that's very interesting and very telling, actually, for the German civilization. I've seen a lot of talk on the forums, uh, on the Reddit page, as to whether the Germans should be split between the Prussians and the Austrians or, you know, different things along that lines. And one of the, one of the things I've heard from several people is the German civilization is basically the Austrians. There's not a lot there that's Prussian, other than like the, the leader head, right? Uh, supposedly, least I'm not making that argument myself, but that's what I've heard, is it's mostly an Austrian civilization. And so I think this rename here to Prussian Ulan uh, is probably a way of giving a little bit of extra Prussian flavor to the civilization and it feeling like a merging or a mixing of the Austrian and Prussian civilizations into this German Civ. Whether that indicates that they are or are not planning on actually splitting the Civ into the, into the Prussians and the Austrians, I don't know about that. I, my initial reaction is it probably means that they're not going to do that. Uh, they're kind of giving a wink and a nod to this discussion just by renaming them this way, but otherwise, that's probably not going to happen. I'll be surprised, and I think it'd be cool if they, if they made that split, but I doubt it. Prince Electors. Uh, okay, fix some issues and some tech things. Hot on a Shawnee. New civilization bonus. Trees last 100% longer. Pretty cool. New town center, big buttons. The cost of each reduced by 5%. Nice. The 8 Aena card increasing 9 Aenas. 11 Aenas. Count increased to 20. Wow. So, okay, bonuses for the Hot on a Shawnee. They just they get more units out of their units. It looks like. Uh, Canadian Loyalists no longer arrive fast. Tactics now improves all infantry. Moved from the Elder section. Uh, environmentalism. Tree yield reduced to 400%, 500%, but now converts the cost of forest prowlers and musket riders to wood and food. I guess it used to be food and coin. Pretty neat. Okay. Uh, since you're saving so much. Uh, your, your wood economy is going to be have so much more potential because of the civilization bonus. That's a pretty nice change. I like it. Extensive forts renamed to Advanced War Huts and merged with the War Hut training card. Training time reduction. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Uh, this looks like solid, solid bonuses for the Hot on the Shawnee. Nice. The Hausa. Draft Oxen moved up to Age 1. Berber Alliance now provides 300 influence down for 400, 300 influence down for 400. Imam, fix an issue with Imam. Okay, how's, uh, looks like just, uh, you know, some slight nerfs, I guess, and, and just tweaks. The Inca, Queen's Festival, the Concha House of Big Button. Cost reduced by 50 resources each, so 150 resources overall. Pretty nice. Chaski, 
again, their version of the Scout, now inflicts five times bonus damage versus mercenaries. So just like the native Scout, Chosky is getting a, a really nice bonus there. Chimu Runner, damage multiplier against artillery decreased. The Huaraka, increased damage multiplier against artillery from 2.5 to 2.5 from 2. Decreased damage multiplier against cavalry 2.3 times from 0.5 times. So the Huaraka now does more damage against artillery, but less damage to cavalry and infantry. Interesting. Okay. I, I am not a big Inca player, but I have heard it said that they have suffered from needing a better answer for uh, artillery, uh, artillery units. So it's nice to see uh, that change there. That should help them out some, I think. The Aymara's support now adds a 3.5 bonus damage against heroes instead of mercenaries. For what unit? I'm, I'm assuming the Chasky. Improves damage by 9, down from 15. It increases Chasky limit by 15. So you can get more Chasky out. They're, they're not quite as effective, or, or, or the card is not improving them as much, but you can get more out, so overall this is probably a buff. And it sends 7 Chasky up from 5, so yeah, there's a power in numbers, and I think that's what that's doing, is it's improving your Chasky even further, just like we're seeing with the native uh, civilizations and this focus on the native scout as a powerful unit in your arsenal. Indians! The shipment rate increases the shipment curve penalty to 10%, up from 8%. It'll take a little bit longer for you to get cards to ship. Seven Azops, uh, reduced to six. Dravidian Martial Arts now improves Rajput melee damage by 20% in total, down from 30%. Rajput melee damage reduced to 12, down from 14, cover mode. Okay, tweaks here and there. I, uh, a nerf overall, I think, for the Indians. Um, probably nothing too crazy, but this shipment rate thing will hurt them uh, in games over the long run. The Italians. Ooh, we've got some interesting things here. First, these various financier cards are giving you less. Uh, so whenever you see, for example, 800 food, in practice what that translates to is, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's going to be 400 wood and 400 coin. Or maybe it's 450 coin. Point is, these resources split in half for the other two. So when you see 800 food, to my mind's eye, that means 400 wood, 400 coin, instead of... 500 wood, 500 coin from the 1,000 food. Right. And so for all of the financier cards, you're getting fewer resources. That kind of stings. The Monte di Pieta, yeah, fewer resources. The Uffizi gather rate uh, during resource conversions reduced to 0.2 from 0.5. Yeah, so uh, the Lombard overall, I think, has been nerfed with these various cards. The Roman Tactics card, which is the hallmark card of my most recent Age of Empires 3 video, the Return of Rome challenge for Age of Empires 3. Uh, I'll have to leave a little note on the video about checking that one out. But the whole idea was to use nothing but bowmen and uh, the, the pavissier and the uh, the pikemen and kind of just your melee era or your, your medieval era units. Uh, to win a game, and you had to get up to H4 and use this card, the Roman Tactics card, it's received a nerf. The Vissier hit points now increased by 15%, down from 30%. So, on the one hand, ouch. On the other hand, as we're about to see, it's not that bad because we get a really nice, uh, how do I want to put it, a really nice opportunity for fans of the Pavissier. The Holy League. Uh, bug fix here. Added the missing cost of 1,500 coins, so that, that stays. The Red Shirts card, renamed to Garabaldini. Nice. Here we go. The Technologies. The Papal Guard, Papal Guard, Politician. The amount of Papal Guards reduced to 5 from 8 and 10 from 12 when using the Advanced Politician's card. However, it now also enables Guard and Imperial upgrades for the Pavissier. It used to be that the Italians were stuck at the veteran level with their Pavissier, but now you can go all the way up to Guard and Imperial, and so I think that will more than cover for what you're losing with the Roman Tactics card. So I, I think if you were to pick up both of these upgrades and the Roman Tactics card, that would make uh, an even stronger archer unit. So 
So, maybe going for that Return of Rome challenge would be even stronger with that uh, Table Guard deck. Spring Guards, unique Culvern upgrade. It increases range resistance. Neat, neat. Galilean Mortars, unique more upgrade cost. Versaglieri, increases the damage bonus multiplier against cavalry and hand shot. Okay. So I think they're saying that Persaglieri are not as bad against Cavalry and Handshot, just like the Skirmisher. Right. Pipo Zuave, Pipo Lancer. Now only provides damage deflection for other ranged infantry and for other Cavalry, respectively. That makes sense. So you can't mix and match units. Okay. Japanese, get one change. Close combat card for age three. Hit points improvement card. Hit points improvement increased to 15% from 10%. Okay, whatever. Lakota. This is a nice one. The winter counts moved to age one. And let me see if I remember. Winter counts. Let's pull that up here real quick. Winter counts. Okay. I remember looking this up before starting the recording, and now I can't remember what Winter Counts does. But you'll notice it's an age four card. I remember now. It gives you more experience for every building and unit that you produce. It was an age four, <coughs> but you know, when you're in age four, chances are you've already built most of the buildings that you're going to, to build in the game, and unless it's gonna be a long drawn out slog fest, you may have produced many of the units you're gonna produce by that point. So the card is sort of in an awkward place. Now it's available in Age 1. I don't think that means that you're going to want to ship it in the first age, but you could put it in your Age 1, you know, area that opens up a uh, fourth age slot if you're so inclined. And then you can ship that card whenever it's convenient for you. And hopefully, the sooner you get it in, the more experience you get it with every building you build, every game you do, so, right? <clears throat> The Seven Councils Fire card has definitely been nerfed. It does cost less, 400 coins instead of 750 coin, but instead of 21 units, you're only getting seven. So that definitely stinks a little. And the Lakota Tukala Soldiers Big Button card has also been nerfed. a little bit of a bump there. So tweaks for Lakota. For the Maltese, this one is interesting. Uh, Civ bonus, hit points increase per ship is now 1% for ships and artillery and 2% for everything else. It used to be 2% across the board, so that's a nerf. Morgan's flagship, adding the missing cost of 1,500 coin. Ouch. Wall guns, the aura radius. So with the wall guns card, you ship that and your units, um, I, think it's, I think it's your units in general. It may specifically be the sentinel. It does more damage when it's fighting near your walls. Um, that range with which the walls benefit the Sentinels has been increased from 12 to 16 uh, rank. No longer improves Sentinels near enemy walls if the Crusader Knights technology got researched. Oh, interesting. Okay. Flamethrowers. Now also sends an artillery foundry wagon. Uh, that, that's, that's cool. Seven fire throwers. Unit, uh, unit counting for eight. All right, the depot costs a little bit more and takes a little bit longer to build, but the blast radius is a little bit further. Okay, probably worthwhile. I'd say that's probably a buff. Fixed gun, no longer affected by the Maltese HP bonus. Decreased population cost to six from seven and range to 34 from 35. Maximum distance to enemies first town center reduced. That's a good thing. Hospitals heal slower in a shorter range. Nerf there. Fire thrower. Added target lock to all range attacks. That's a buff. Arbalesters. Unique crossbowman upgrade reduced in cost, but the combat strength is only improved by 35%, down from 40%. This is neat. The Basilisk. A unique culvern upgrade cost is reduced to board of wood and board of food, but culverins now inflict additional poison damage. Now, what does that mean? Like, how would you use the poison damage? I have no idea. I will say thematically, I love it. Uh, just given the name, if you're going to call a cannon a basilisk, uh, knowing that that mythological creature, and uh, I believe it had a gaze of stone, if I'm not mistaken, 
Uh, it had poison in its attacks and things. So the idea that you'd have this artillery cannon called a basilisk that now does poison damage on top of its regular attack makes sense. But what does that actually mean in practice? Do, does this turn the Culverin into an anti-infantry unit? Or, you know, does it make it more useful as kind of a jack-of-all-trades cannon on top of its anti-artillery role? Or... Maybe this means that it will... The poison damage, because uh, the way poison damage currently works in Age of Empires 3 is it's just extra damage over time for the targeted unit. It's not it's not creating a pool of toxin like in something like Command & Conquer would. You know? uh, so, because it's targeting a specific unit, maybe this just means that it will be that much more effective against artillery that it's firing at. Right? So I don't know what that looks like in practice, but I'm excited to find out. The Mexicans. A lot of changes here. Let's see. It's interesting to me that if you're in the Central American Revolution, the Advanced Frontier Defenses card now costs resources to send while you're in the Revolution, but not if you revolt back to Mexico. That's so kind of an interesting dynamic there. Uh, let's see. This is pretty big. Old 300. So uh, this is a card that ships a settler for every building that you create. Uh, it used to have a max of 85. Now the maximum is 24 citizens. So, um, yeah, that, that's definitely a... I guess a, I'd say maybe a nerf or, or maybe even better understood as a... Uh, you know, just. I don't know if you would typically wait until you had 85 villagers stored up before you ship that card, but... Interesting. Uh, let's see. The plan of Ayutla decreases costs of revolutionaries again and allows training them in batches of 10. Now, I don't know. This used to be where it would s turn all of your solteadors into revolutionaries. Um, and so I don't know if that is still a part of it or if they've removed that aspect and now this is all the card does. But I think that's pretty nice. They do get a, a kind of a change here, a thematic change. Salteadors in age four are renamed to Vigilantes. Unique Salteador upgrade cost reduced. The unit cost is reduced by 10%, and the Salteador range is increased by one. And then the Charros, a unique Chinaco upgrade cost reduced to 900 wood and 900 coin. Research time is 10 uh, seconds shorter. Cool. So your Salteadors, aka Vigilantes, now gain more range with every tech up, which is pretty neat. The Ottomans. Tweaks here and there. Nothing crazy that I see. The Abus Gunner will take a little bit longer to train, and it's not quite as effective against Light Cab as it used to be. Otherwise... Uh, okay, so damage increased for the Azop, but ranged multipliers reduced. The Bashi Bozuk. Yeah, it just tweaks. I don't think there's anything crazy here. The Spahi has been correctly renamed to the Sipahi. I'm not sure how to pronounce that right. There is an I in there. So, look at the thematic change. The Yoruk now constructs town centers 15% slower than other villagers, which makes sense given the Ottomans' unique feature. TCs, of course, producing bills automatically. The Forhumbrachis card now ships 5 instead of 4. And uh, looks like some a little bit more cost associated with some of these technologies. Okay. okay. Yeah. All right. The Portuguese. The Order of the Tower and Sword, which is, uh, again, one of their unique church improvement uh, techs, now also improves the Black Riders' HP and melee combat. Now, remember at the beginning of the video, I said, you know, let's highlight that improvement to the Black Riders, right? What was it? All the way back up here at the very top. Let's find it again. Where are you, Black Rider? Melee damage increased 218 from 10. So they've already received an improvement, and now if you're playing as the Portuguese and you ship this card, on top of that, the Black Riders that you receive gain additional HP and further melee combat. So that's going to be a very powerful mercenary option for them. I don't know if they have a way of consistently getting Black Riders other than uh, through this card. 
So it may be a one and done shipment. But either way, definitely a buff for this option. The Ordnance Besteros. Unique crossbowman upgrade cost reduced to 700 wood, 700 coin. And the unit itself is 25% cheaper. The research is 15 seconds shorter. Big buff there if you're going to play crossbowman. Legionarios. Unique musketeer upgrade cost reduced. But the combat strength is only improved by 35%. Down from 40%. And the Legion Dragoons. A unique dragoon upgrade cost reduced to 900 wood, 900 coin. Nice. Finally. This is cool. The Russians have received some really nice TLC here. Taking a look at their units first. The Strelet, the line of sight has been increased to 18 from 16. The Musketeer has been renamed to the Recruit. And they've received unique visuals. Also receiving a change is the Halberdier, which has been renamed to the Poruchik. Added unique visuals and the unit is now available in Age 2. Uh, this note is correct. These units have always had lower combat values than other Musketeers and Halberdiers. So we've seen this in the past with the change to the Dutch uh, Settler, the Ottoman Settler. Because they required different resources, they thought it's worthwhile to you know highlight how different they are by changing the name and the visual. Meanwhile, the Russians have always had a different Musketeer from everybody else and a different Halberdier from everybody else. As far as the stats were concerned, it was a little bit deceptive that they had the exact same name and the same visuals. So that's now changing with the Recruit and the Poruchik. Uh, so that that's really exciting, but we're not even finished yet. The cards. Uh, four Grenadier card, upgraded to five. The six Poruchiks, and remember, when we say Poruchiks, we mean Halberdier. They've been added to the home city. Cool. The Boyars card. This used to affect Strelets and Cossacks and Oprichnik. This now affects Cossacks and Oprichnik and Cav Archer. So the Boyars card exclusively upgrades and improves your cavalry options. Does not affect infantry at all. But you have a new card, New Order Regiments, improving Strelet, Recruit, and Poruchik hit points and damage by 10%. So... New Order Regiments for your Infantry, Boyars for your Cav. Landed Gentry in Age 2 enables Cavalry Archers to be trained in the Commerce Age in a shorter train time and for wood instead of coin costs. Okay, cool. Peter's Toy Soldiers. Uh, so this no longer improves your Musketeers quite as much as it did. But the card now also affects the Poruchiks and the Grenadier as well. So again, a really nice bonus for your infantry options, other than the Streltsy. Uh, or the Streltsy, however you pronounce that. Polk, a new card. Poruchik hit points increased, and Poruchiks gain more hit points from nearby infantry. Remember, of course, the Russians are all about massing infantry. So I'd imagine you will have Halberdier... With so much HP, if you pick up this card. It's pretty cool. Miliutin Reforms in H4 turns recruits into Northern Guard Musketeers, costing population. I don't know whether this means that you no longer can train recruits and instead you're training Northern Guard Musketeer. I am imagining that this is a one-time transformation of the army you got on the field. Uh, so Northern Guard Musketeer... Uh, they move, if I remember correctly, they move faster than regular Musketeer. Uh, they fire faster. They have a better rate of fire than regular Musketeer. They don't have quite as much HP as regular Musketeer. But then again, Russian Musketeers did not have as much HP. So I, I believe this is an all-around buff, uh, this swap here. It's pretty cool. The Bashkir Rebellion turns Cossacks into disciplined Tatar archers. Now this is interesting to me too, because I think Milutin reforms... It keeps the units in the same class. You know, recruits are you know, the heavy infantry. Northern Guard Musketeers are heavy infantry. Here, Cossacks are heavy cav, but Tatar archers, if I'm not mistaken, that's light cav. So that's an, an interesting, I guess, tech switch. And I don't know when you'd want to make that change. Maybe if you have a lot of Cossacks and then your opponent goes Dragoons to try to fight off your Cossacks, then you make the switch into Tatar archers and they will do bonus damage against... You know, or, or maybe it's maybe if it's heavy cav versus heavy cav. You have Cossacks, he shows up with Hussar, 
and then you make the switch into Tatar Archers, and now you're doing bonus da damage versus Heavy Cav that you weren't otherwise going to do. That might be cool. House of Romanov moved to Age 1, which again, I believe House of Romanov, it gives your uh, barracks and towers more HP. So that was an Age 2 card. Age 2 for the Russians, for most civilizations, Age 2, those slots are very valuable. So moving this card to Age 1 just frees up that Age 2 slot for a, a more pressing card and still allows you to use this card whenever you want. Not necessarily that you'd want to throw this card down right away in the first age, but it's there for you whenever you want. Tula Arms Foundry delivers two Grenadiers and one Artillery Foundry Wagon in the second age. That's pretty cool. I like it. Westernization. This is a card I use all the time. It now also researches veteran Peruchiks, cost increased appropriately. An extra 100 wood and 100 coin to 400 of each. Makes sense considering what you're getting out of it. Petrine reforms. Cost change to 1600 wood, 1600 coin from 2500 coin. I cannot tell whether this is a buff or a nerf. On the one hand, you're literally sp you know, technically spending more resources than you otherwise were. But if you're playing the Russians, chances are pretty high that you have shipped the distrib distributivism card. And you've got a lot of villagers on wood already. So you may, if you're like me anyway, uh, there's a good chance you might be floating wood or you have a pretty significant wood economy. And so in practice, this might allow you to actually get this card faster than you otherwise would. I think for many players, this might end up being a net positive. Although, technically, if you have mastery over your economy, this might be a, a, you know, a nerf. Bashkir Ponies now delivers 23 upgraded Shivoni-like infantry instead of 17 Guard Hussar, renamed to Lifeguard Yagers. Now, that's interesting because... Huh. Well, it's, it's a very... Okay, let's just say it's a very different kind of of card because um you know you used to get heavy cavalry which okay you have the cossacks but even the cossacks are kind of a a weaker heavy cav that they're population efficient that's their main benefit uh and so the bashkir ponies sort of plugged maybe a, a gap in your typical russian strategy uh, for me, I like to go pretty heavily into infantry, and then I'd use Bashkir Ponies to kind of plug in that gap. Well, now you're getting this skirmisher unit when you already have, chances are, uh, you know, fully upgraded uh, uh, Streltsy, the Strelets, right? Because you, you've probably picked up Westernization. You've probably picked up Petrine Reforms. The Shivoni are just going to be more of the same. I, 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 it's cool. I'm looking forward to seeing the lifeguard Jaegers, but I'm guessing that that might actually be a nerf, just to, from a tactical standpoint. That's my read. I might be wrong. Tatar Loyalists. Okay. Okay. Renamed to Dvoriane. Makes your Cav Archers uh, better. Right. Upgraded cost. So it, it's cheaper, but the combat strength is a little bit less than before. Okay. Pavlov Grenadiers. Unique Grenadier upgrade cost reduced, and the unit is 10% cheaper. Nice buffs and changes for the Russians. That's really exciting to see. I've really enjoyed playing the Russians as of late, so I'm looking forward to trying out these changes. The Spanish. Okay, let's see. Uh, so now, when you ship the Royal Ala Alabarderos, it gives the Halberdier HP regeneration and promotions. Very cool. Wild Geese moved to age 3. Still costs 2,000 food. Now ships 20 Irish Brigadiers instead of 10 Harkabusier. And enables Irish Brigadiers in the taverns and improves their movement and attack speed. Very, very cool. Very cool. Espadachins. Unique Rotolero upgrade cost reduced to 900 wood and 900 coin. And Rotoleros now inflict bonus damage against heavy infantry. So I guess you could use them as a you know an alternative for skirmishers or something in order to mow down 
you know, musketeers from, from the foes. That's cool. Garachistas, unique lancer upgrade cost reduced. Lancer movement speed gets improved. Nice. The Tercio, unique pikeman upgrade cost reduced. Research time is shorter. Neat. The Swedes, Carolians. Cost increased. Ooh. The negative melee damage multiplier toward riflemen changed to include all light infantry units. Nerfs for the Carolians. Leather cannons, no longer tagged as a gunpowder trooper, which I think means it will not be receiving bonuses it used to receive from the advanced arsenal. Some of those texts would say, gunpowder troopers get extra move speed or, or hit harder, so that's no longer applying to the leather cannon. Train times have been increased. Damage multiplier against heavy cav has been reduced. A nerf for the leather cannon. Those two are the main units for the Swedish comp. Hakapellet negative damage multipliers of 0.7 increased to 0.75. A nerf, right? I think that's a nerf. Uh, Torp build time increased to 19 seconds from 16. Wow, nerf there. Uh, let's see. Nice rename there. Julita Stikebruck. Line Grenadiers added to home city. Yeah. German mercenary contracts improves damage and HP of mercenaries by 20% down from 25%. Whoa. Gustavian Guards now have slightly more armor and movement speed. Those are uh, pikemen, if I'm not mistaken. Dalkarl Pikemen in H4. Unique Pikemen upgrade cost reduced and unit costs reduced by 50%. Okay. Drabants. Unique Hakapella upgrade cost reduced. Okay. Cool. Uh, I think overall a nerf for the Swedes. That It seems like tweaks here and there, but definitely trying to curb the Swedish performance. United States, German immigrants. Settler wagons are now trainable from the commerce age. It delivers a homestead wagon. Cost of 200 wood added. So you, that's 200 wood that you need to have now. I don't believe German immigrants used to have a wood cost. So you're not able to ship that maybe as immediately as you might otherwise be able to. But you're getting a homestead wagon out of it, which, if I'm not mistaken, allows that wagon to transform into any kind of economic building, like a house or a, a farm or a marketplace or whatever. So I think... You're probably at least getting that wood back with that wagon. And I don't remember when settler wagons were trainable, whether they were trainable from age one or age three, or whatever. But now you gotta be in age two in order to train settler wagons. Okay. Oklahoma Black Mesa costs a little bit more now. Kentucky Hunters no longer increases owl hoot range, but ships five owl hoots instead. Florida Cow Hunters now also sends two cowboys for each shipment you have sent so far this game. <laughs> cool. Seminole Ponies now also sends nine Hussar. Marion's Diversions now also sends two Quaker Guns. Volunteers. U uh, U.S. Militia Upgrade Cost Reduced. The research time is 15 seconds shorter. Neat. And then finally, we have uh, a bunch of changes to the Revolutions. I won't go through all of these. Most of them... Uh, you know, little tweaks here and there. The big one, uh, a couple of big ones. Canada has received a really big change where they've now received a bunch of cards from the British, the French, and the Haudenosaunee civilizations, which makes a lot of sense because Canada is sort of a, a melting pot of British influences, French influence, influences, Haudenosaunee influences, or Native American influences, right? So that's kind of cool to see that there for Canada. The Grizzly Bear now costs one pop slot. Good. I had a battle against a guy on my Discord server where uh, he overwhelmed me with Grizzly Bears. And maybe this population slot will slightly curb that uh, that terrible, terrible strategy. <laughs> uh, okay. Fencibles. Researches musketeer upgrades and improves the cost and range. Cool. Canadian military officer can now be sent from the home city and improves villagers, native warriors, and militiamen in combat. That's kind of nice. Let's see. Da, 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 da. The Finns have received several Swedish and Russian cards to the home city. It's pretty cool. Uh, Egypt is no longer available to the British, but Haiti is now available to the British. So a little bit of a change there for the British. Uh, Grand Colombia. Okay. Da, 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 da. Okay. Colombian Army enables the Imperial upgrades for your barracks units to be researched at greatly reduced costs. Pretty nice. 
Hungary now also researches the Rumeliots Royal Guard upgrade for the Ottomans and the Guard Cossacks for the Russians. Nice. Mexico. Now, this is strange to me. I don't understand this. The civilization name. The Revolutionary Mexico Civ is now called Revolutionary Mexicans for proper differentiation from the main civilization. Now, there are two things about this that I find weird. This is a total tangent, but I got to say it. One, why is it called Revolutionary Mexicans and not Revolutionary Mexico? Because the other revolutions are the names of the states. It's Hungary, not Hungarians. Indonesia, not Indonesians. So instead of Revolutionary Mexicans, I think this should be Revolutionary Mexico. Two, I like the change. I think it is good to distinguish between Mexico, the revolution option for Spain and, and the others, versus Mexico, the civilization you can start with from the beginning of the game. That makes sense to me. But if you're going to do that, why is the United States revolutionary option not called the revolutionary United States or the colonial U.S.? Or the 13 colonies or you know, something. Why, why is it still the United States for the revolution option? I don't understand that. I think this should be consistent between the two. All right. Uh, let's see. Anyway, uh, Mexico, revolutionary Mexico. Uh, some tweaks here and there. Wild West can no longer be researched from the four cures tech. Okay, whatever. Romania. Dorabant has 50% more HP up from 10%, but also costs 10 food more. Danubian principalities, allies to the houses of Fanar in the native embassy. Pretty cool. Uh, you get riding school. Rossio Dragoons can only be sent once again, but now also allows Rossio Dragoons to be trained from forts. Pretty nice bonus for Romania there. South Africa. Trek wagon can now be trained from town centers, stables, forts, and galleons. Instead of shipping three Trek wagons, now all houses turn into Trek wagons. Wow. Now grants 200 population by default. Okay, so you just get to transform your houses into, um, you know, I, I suppose the Trek wagons turn into various buildings and infrastructure. That makes South Africa pretty cool. That's a really interesting revolution right there. And then the U.S. No longer improves Gatlin gun HP, but now spawns a general instead. Updated the revolution with various cards from the U.S. civilization. All right, pretty cool, pretty cool. And you see some of those right here. The Volunteers card replaced by Morgan's Continental Sharpshooters. Yeah, I think you can see them right there. Pretty neat. And then finally, some map changes. And that's what they've got. So those are the big changes. I think uh, the big winners here are Russia. They've received some really big changes. And the British have some interesting uh, adaptations. Portuguese have some interesting things going on. I, I think the Black Riders card is going to be cool. Uh, but what do you guys think? What are the highlights and the lowlights for you? What do you enjoy about this upcoming patch? What would you like to see them further change that maybe wasn't here or maybe a change that they've made that you're not a fan of? Let me know in the comments below. For now, guys, this is the Iron Kaiser signing off. Have a great one.